Hello dear ones, it's Alice. It's early in the morning here, the birds are singing, the sun is out, and the leaf blower is making a lot of noise down the hill. <laughs> I hope you can't hear that part anyway. I've been looking here for a few days, actually for a week or so, at um, a speech by, by, by Hamlet in Shakespeare's play Hamlet. And it's, it's a pretty famous uh, speech that I learned when I was young. And, uh, it, you know, first I thought it hardly applies in the context of ascension. And then I thought, well, maybe, maybe it does. You know, this morning I'm thinking maybe it does. There, there is something to be looked at here in the context of ascension, uh, what the Christians in the Bible call the second coming of Christ or Christ Consciousness, which is the process that's underway right now. Actually, um, uh, the process I hear, this is kind of hard to grok, you know. The process, as I understand it, has already taken place, but large masses of humanity have um, f made the free will decision to continue with the third dimensional um, hologram for the time being as they purify their light bodies and prepare to, for, for the fullness of their multi-dimensional majesty. Now what do I mean by multi-dimensional? That's, that's the question that I'm going to discuss after I read to you this poem. All right. And uh, just for a little background for those that don't know about um, Hamlet, the poor guy, uh, his, his uncle had just murdered his father and apparently uh, either married or was about to marry his mother. And this uh, was, was an action that he considered should be revenged. And so <clears throat> the problem is when you go around avenging yourself, uh, sometimes the consequences are that you yourself get in, get killed, you know. <clears throat> you get drawn into the action. This is something I've re referred to recently to those that are undergoing um, um, amplification of, of change of the magnetic, electromagnetic field as the tendency to act out. Then, and, you, and what I've always said is don't act out. Don't act unusual. Continue with your ordinary way of acting or ratchet down to like a vacation time or something like that. A little break to go for a walk in the park. Um, but, but don't act out in an unusual way that will upset society, such as um, killing someone or killing yourself or getting into a car accident or any of the things that, that I would consider to be kind of serious acting out, okay? So that's the thing we want to avoid right now because the energies are ratcheting up and, uh, and, uh, uh, and will be apparently through a window of activity that includes several weeks around the time of um, the equinox in March. And I could say for me recently, the um, the, the electromagnetic field activity has been more than intense. So, so there's that acting out thing. I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit, but let's get on to Hamlet. All right. Now, he's, he's all by himself right now, I think, although there may be people hanging around uh, trying to eavesdrop. And his sister, Ophelia, is about to, to walk in and, 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 and talk to him. Um, as you may know, if you've read the story, when he kind of goes over the edge and, and, and becomes very inappropriately involved in an argument with her when she's just trying to, to ho hoping that he will be okay and not act out. But, but so here's his soliloquy. It means a speech to yourself or thinking things over in your mind. Uh, here's a soliloquy that, that took place just before Ophelia came on the scene. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer 
the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep, to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes. When he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin, who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death the undiscovered country, from whose bourne no traveler returns, puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly door with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pitch and moment, with this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia, nymph in thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Okay, so now, this uh, soliloquy is a favorite of a lot of people, and, it, and it's very, very famous. And uh, so I know that, that everyone who has read this poem and enjoyed this poem has their opinion about it. And here I am about to come up with a totally contrary notion about it. So for those of you with set opinions and determined opinions about what's going on here, I offer my abject apologies. So you might want to stop listening right here and then see, not worry about being aggravated by what I have to say. <laughs> so for those of you that are into ascension, the ascension process, these, um, these comments that I have may apply. So, so we've talked a little about acting out and, uh, and, and uh, Hamlet's dilemma right now and how he, according to the code of his like moral conduct, he's, he's, it's important to him to avenge his father's death. And, and here he's going on about, well, it's going to be pretty dangerous to try something like that. Here I am, a prince of Denmark and all, you know, I could lose everything. I could, I could go down into who knows where, the realm of shades, and, and um, find myself in a much worse predicament if I, if I try avenging my father's death because somebody might kill me. And as I recall, that's sort of what happened is <clears throat> he lost his life at the end of this story. So what he did was he decided to act out. Um, and in the context of ascension, well, a lot of people are, are acting out vengeance and um, revenge. 
And I just like to say about that, uh, something that I found out about timelines in Revenge is that when something like Revengeable happens to us, um, if we dwell on it, if we don't forgive, if we dwell on that revengeful thing, timeline-wise, what happens is we, we, we cycle back, temporally cycle back to that, that uh, in the fourth dimension, to that emotional state that, that we were in when we discovered the revengeable thing. So every time we think of something that really irks us like that and feel that we should act out, we move back on our timeline in fourth dimension to the place where the original soul wounding occurred. So there's no, there's no multi-dimensional um, possibilities there because there we are stuck on one timeline. We can't move forward on our own timeline because we keep cycling back to the old thing. We can't switch to a different timeline because our minds are completely set on the need for an, uh, a, an acting out action in the current timeline. We can't switch to a different dimension either. We're stuck in the current dimension. So our minds are trapping us as Hamlet's mind was trapped in a time and space trap. So that's the big argument against vengeance, is that in order to be free, in order to, to recognize our multi-dimensional multi majesty, we have to set aside vengeance. We have to set aside blame and, and instead forgive. We have to forgive. And no matter what, no matter how outrageous the thing that has been done to us, we have to forgive. And what that forgiveness does is it frees up our own majesty. It's not a question of being nice to somebody else. It's a question of, of healing our own heart and allowing ourselves to step into that majesty. So now on to the second question here. The question that Hamlet brings up is, what if I do decide to act out and then the consequences are that I myself, my own um, body is lost in the process? And, uh, you know, who knows what kinds of horrible things might happen to me, he says. If I've, if I've lost my body, I just don't know. Well, yeah, I'm here to tell you. I'd tell Hamlet if he were here today that what will happen is that the awareness, your divine awareness, your, your, your truth in, of of reality, uh, that part of you which is the spark of divinity will proceed into a dimension, another dimension, it will be freed from this dimension and proceed into the fourth dimension. And there, in the fourth dimension, the astral plane, it's all happening too. The ascension process is happening to all the souls in the fourth dimension and all the souls in the third dimension. Okay, very soon, most likely, if you're with the ma vast majority of people, you'll, you'll be booted back out into the third dimension, if that's, your, if that's your choice. Most people choose that. And so, I know there's a lot of acting out these days, and there's a lot of concern over retaining the physical form, and rightly so, because by keeping ourselves anchored on earth, keeping our, our boots on the earth, <laughs> keeping our feet on the ground, and feeling our hearts, and living our lives uh, in, in, in joy and harmony with all that is, we can fulfill the destiny, help earth to fulfill her destiny. And, and many people do choose that, you know. But even if something catastrophic happens, even if we act out, even if for some reason we drop form, as they say, the, the potential still exists to um, participate in the ascension process. So the main thing right now is to set aside our fears about, um, about death and killing and so forth and just set our minds instead, our awareness, on our hearts um, 
to feel appreciation and gratitude every day for something. Every minute that fear comes up, we can turn from fear. Um, and in fact, you have the tools at hand right now to, um, to shift timelines whenever a fearful thing comes up or to shift dimensions. So, so take, just, just understand that you're not trapped in your mind. Your mind is like one tiny aspect of you, the tiniest, the one that's trapped in time and space until you download cosmic mind <coughs> or begin your DNA repair process. So downloading cosmic mind and beginning DNA repair, you can go to Judy Satori's website. That's www.judysatori.com. She's terrific, but I have to warn you that her activations of light are extremely powerful. So um, if you decide to undertake them, set aside some free time for yourself. A long weekend, you know, time to just relax and enjoy life and sit in the sun, get plenty of rest and drink lots of water and then it will go very smoothly for you. So, no acting out. Don't worry if a friend of yours actually tries the Hamlet routine, you know. That person will be okay, that soul will be all right. And uh, for the rest of you, hang in there. This is a wonderful time you've chosen to be alive, so hang in there. You're doing great. Love to everybody. <laughs> For those of you that love Hamlet, please excuse all that lack of elocution. <laughs> so, here are the tools for shifting timelines and optimizing d dimensional awareness. In case you haven't read about it yet, uh, it goes like th there are two uh, activations of light. Here's the first one. Uh, to, to optimize timelines. You say, spirit to team, optimize timelines for the all through free will. And here's the second one. This is to optimize your dimensional awareness. You say, <clears throat> spirit to team, optimize dimensional awareness for the all through free will. So now you know. <laughs>